Good afternoon, book lovers. It's Robert Boyd with yet another book report for you. And this time I'm turning to Texas. The, uh, the book is uh, Yard Art and Handmade Places by Jill Noakes with Pat Jasper. I'm not sure what Pat Jasper did. Uh, as, far, as far as I know, Jill Noakes is really the author of the whole book. But that's not necessarily in her favor, as you'll see. The book was published in 2007, and uh, Jill Noakes is a uh, landscape designer, uh, and she is not a um, she's not a good writer. I mean, I, I hate to say that because uh, the book has some things going for it, but she's not she's not she's not a felicitous prose stylist. Um, She's a gardener, and uh, early on in the book, she, she publishes a map, which I'm going to show you, uh, called uh, The Vegetational Areas of Texas, and uh, the, the uh, intent is to go through these different areas, showing different yards that people have made. The subject matter is, is sort of hard to, like, totally pinpoint, because it's, um, it's, it's yards, of course, and... Um, what people have done with them, and mostly, uh, it, it, I'd say, you know, most of the yards it talks about it talks about what they planted and stuff. And this seems like a totally real and acceptable topic. It's not one that's super interesting to me. So, in that way, the fault of the book is uh, just that it's not really my cup of tea. Um, but what's uh, interesting to me, and I think the reason I picked it up, and I've had this on my shelf forever, and I, I don't know. I think I probably picked it up at Half Price Books and Records or something. Um, it said it, it discusses a few um, yards that are uh, essentially artworks. And really, any good garden is, a, is an artwork. Um, and that would have been a perfectly good subject for a book, except this book has a really strange fault. You would think it would be like a picture book with a uh, you know descriptions and, and 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 so on about what's in each yard and in each garden and the people who made them and so on. But the way it's formatted is that the writing is actually the main part and the pictures are kind of small, uh, which you know is not good for this kind of book. I mean, really, for the, if you're gonna do a book about people's gardens and yards, it should it should be. A lavish picture book. Anyway, as I said, the photos are quite small, but I do want to talk about some of the specific people and and their their yards that she uh, she discusses. And first, I'm going to talk about Charlie Stagg. And throughout most of the book, the photos are by someone named Krista Whitson, and they seem fine. But uh, the Charlie Stagg photos are all by John Fulbright, who was a I think a friend of Stagg's. And Stagg was an artist who lived in, in Vider, Texas, possibly the least conducive city to art in Texas, but he was there. And um, Stagg, he's sort of considered by, by some to be an outsider artist, but he's not. He, or he, he wasn't, I should say. Even though the book was published in 2007, Stagg died in 2012. Um, but Stagg was a... Uh, was trained or got an MFA at a, at a, at a, uh, oh, Temple, I think. So he, he, he got an elite art education from an elite institution. And so he knew all about that stuff. And he knew artists and so on. Um, and he was a sculptor. And uh, I'm going to, I'm showing you some of the, the pictures of his. Um, Actually, I should say, I'm showing you some of the pictures of his, his environment that he built for himself on his land, his family's land in Vider, Texas. And he basically had this idea of um, building up a structure with uh, triangles, uh, and uh, he made sculptures out of it. And they're really interesting, and they're snaky and weird, and they're, they're essentially abstract, but they're... Uh, they're, they're natural and they're, they're organic. And um, I, 
amazingly actually have one. Um, I uh, I got interested in Stag when I, I read his obituary, and and I was interested because it said you know he's from Vider, and to me Vider is you know the infamous Sunset Town where uh, you know black people are told to not be in town when sun the sun went down, and for our, most of its recent history, it has been seriously unwelcoming to black residents, although some, I think, now live there. Um, and so, kind of a shameful place, but uh, Charlie Stagg's family was from there, and he was from there, and I think after, uh, after college and after teaching for a while, he, um, he just went home, decided he would live at home and build us this um, structure, it would be serve as both a studio and a place to live on his family's property, which is on kind of on the outskirts of town. But when I say outskirts, Vider is a, a pin speck on the map. It, 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 the outskirts, there, there's nothing but outskirts. Um, and he, what he built, he built it out of a uh, concrete, wood, and and glass, as you you see. And so I, I read about his, his obituary and uh, read about him in the obituary and I mentioned him to a, an artist friend of mine, a sculptor here in, in Houston named Butch Jack. His name is actually Meredith Jack, but he goes by Butch. And uh, he's, he's a, I think he's about, he was about Stagg's age. Stagg was born in 1939. And uh, uh, Jack uh, taught at, um, Lamar for a long time. He lived in Houston, but he would commute to uh, to Beaumont to teach uh, art and got to know Stagg. Because apparently Stagg liked having people come over and hang out. And uh, I've heard they had great parties there. Um, so Jack offered to uh, show me Stagg's uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know what you want to call this thing. It's, it's sort of a um, a personal art environment. So we drove out there one day, one morning, and we drove on a dirt road to get back to this pasture off the main road. And uh, I took uh, I took a bunch of pictures, including this one, up uh, this one, this one here of a uh, of um of Jack standing in the ruins of a. Uh, Charlie Stagg's creation and so even though Charlie Stagg wasn't an outsider artist per se he was definitely a visionary artist and it I, I thought as I saw it man this should be preserved and so I, I went and looked it up uh, uh, on the county uh, property records and found out who's the owner of it and it turns out the owner is his daughter um, and uh, I got in contact with her. I mean, it, you know, the county property records had her address, so I wrote her a letter, and I met her. I met her and her husband and and, and one of her kids at the uh, at the location of the the um, of Stag's environment, and uh, and one year, uh, I mean, she she's definitely kind of a working class woman, uh, and, and Stag was not any sort of rich man or anything. And one year, she was having trouble coming up with the money to uh, pay the taxes on it, and I, I paid her property taxes that year. Um, I don't know what's happened to it, though. Uh, so, anyway, Charlie Stagg's place out in Vider, it should be a monument to Charlie Stagg, open to the public, but I don't think it is. Then, uh, another chapter they had, it was on Cleveland Turner, uh, the flower man, uh, who was a, um, an alcoholic, in Houston, homeless alcoholic, and was rescued from alcoholism, and every place he lived, instead of drinking, instead of uh, falling back into his bad habits, he uh, he decorated. And I think he lived in uh, several different places before he finally settled down to one long-term place that he stayed in until he died. And that's the thing. When this book was written, he was still alive, but he died in 2013. Um, and his, his place is still standing over by uh, Project Row Houses. Uh, 
one that I'm interested in seeing, although I'm not sure you can see it, is uh, the Cathedral of Junk, uh, which was created by Vince Hanneman, and it's in uh, Austin. And I apparently, I mean, the book was written in 2007, but apparently in 2010, he got complaints, and uh, the city of Austin said, you know, this is not up to code. And admittedly, a lot of these visionary environments aren't up to code because the people making it, making them are not making like an ordinary building where you go to the city offices and you fill out all the paperwork and everything. Uh, so apparently you can't just go to it the way you could, but I think you can make appointments. So that might be something to do in Austin. Then uh, another, uh, and as far as I know, Vince Hanneman's still alive. Uh, another uh, um, thing, I, and that would be very convenient for me to go see because I'm in Houston. I go to Austin frequently, my family there. But this one uh, that I'm showing you now, the Azúcar, uh, the Casa de Azúcar, the Sugar House by Rufino Loya Rivas is in El Paso. And it's supposed to be fantastic. I mean, recently Glass Tire, uh, the local Houston area online arts magazine, had uh, the people from Web Gallery, where I bought the, uh, the, the sculpture by Charlie Stagg, uh, recommend uh, artistic environments. And this was one of them, one of the ones they recommended. And uh, I'm sure it would be great to see. But uh, the pictures weren't bad. The pictures in the book are, like I said, they're small, but they're well made. And I'm going to close out with uh, Dr. Joe Smith, who, I, as far as I know, is still alive. I couldn't find an obituary for him or anything. Uh, in Caldwell, Texas. And Caldwell is a little town uh, uh, roughly halfway between uh, Austin and College Station. And it, it, he, he, was, he moved there uh, to be their doctor because, like a lot of small towns, they, they have a shortage of doctors. They, they don't have enough business to keep... Uh, you know, a lot of doctors busy, but he said he would move there if they would build a hospital. So they built a small hospital, I mean, like 16 beds. He moved there, and it was the, the town's doctor for, for decades. And uh, in his retirement, he started, he learned how to weld and started doing sculptures. And I, to me, that's, I love that. I love, I love the idea that someone just learns how to do, to make a sculptural object and just fills their yard with it. Anyway, to me, that would have been, by itself, an interesting book, just focusing on that kind of art. But they, you know, Gil Noakes wanted to get into the um, into the gardening, and I totally understand it. And like I say, gardens are a kind of artwork. Um, but I, I, I just not... I don't really have a feel for it. I'm, I have a black thumb. Um, I have some plants out on the balcony, and if they survive, it'll be a miracle. Anyway, that's uh, that's my description of um, my report on uh, yard art and handmade places. And I, I especially value it because there's just not that much written about Charlie Stagg, and there should be because I think he I think he's an interesting um, and. It, somewhat important artist but he was sort of so far off the beaten path that people people didn't know about him except for people who went to who study art at Lamar and I think they all at one point or another ended up parting at, at Charlie Stagg's I wish I had but he died before I got to know him thank you very much oh and one last thing this is New Year's Eve this might be my last one for the year but I'm going to try and do one more Thanks very much. Goodbye.